Hey! Cheers! Cheers! Mabuhai! Mabuhai! Como esta ka? Como esta ka? <laughs> Welcome back to Ticket to Anywhere podcast. I know we've been gone for a while. My name is Trizzy. And I'm Leah, LA in flight on all your social media networks. We are talking about the Philippines. And just a reminder, we are a visual podcast, so check us out on YouTube, Ticket Number Two Anywhere podcast. And we are on all your social media networks at Ticket Number Two Anywhere podcast. That's on Facebook and Instagram. On Twitter, we're T2A Podcast. And if you want to listen to us, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Stitcher. And some of the topics that we're going to cover today for our Philippines. Um, episode is you know budgeting, the itinerary, accommodation, the islands that we visited, um, things that we did, festivals that we went to, and packing customs that we learned about the Filipino culture, and just everything that you need to know. One of the biggest things I learned about the Philippines: don't plan the Philippines. Like if you had as much time as I did, yeah. do not plan it. I swear, I redid my plan my itinerary three times before I left for the Philippines, and then I got there, and it changed almost every week. Oh, man. So biggest tip, go there, meet yeah. people. If you're you know, if you're traveling solo, traveling with friends, maybe meet people, talk to people, talk to locals, see where they recommend. And cu- if you can, if you have the time and the money, do it. Be fluid with your plans. Yeah. I wish I was a bit more fluid, even though I, I actually was very lenient, mm-hmm. you know, really didn't have a ton booked. But, you know, next time I'm gone for a month, I definitely want to just let – Everyone else guide me. I don't want to plan, which yeah. is odd because I'm very much a planner and I, I'm an event planner by trade. Same, same. But there's just something exciting, especially after this month in the Philippines. There's something exciting about going there and being like, all right, everyone, what should I do? Where should I go? Yeah. You but I get it. If you have yeah. two weeks you and you want to hit up mm-hmm. certain spates or spots, you can't you can't be like, oh, where, yeah. I mean, you can. Where should I go? But right. it's tougher. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So first thing we want to talk about are... Basically, really quickly, favorite, most surprising thing about the country? My favorite thing is feeding the giraffes. <laughs> this was on um, Palawan, and we went to a safari there. And just feeding one of my favorite animals was great. And I didn't have to pay an arm and a leg to do that. And what was it called? It was, it was Karan, the cat, right? Yeah, cat buswanga, um, kaluet. 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 And, um, <laughs> disclaimer, <laughs> all the pronunciations of this episode, <laughs> it's going to be difficult, <laughs> difficult, and we're going to put our all into it. Another favorite thing of mine at the Philippines was just checking out the Boracay sunset. I've heard about it from a lot of people that has already gone, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, it's the best sunset, and I'm like, oh, you're biased because they're always, like, Filipinos oh. that tell me that. <laughs> you're biased, you're biased. But it seriously was, like, one of the best Ooh, okay. sunsets that I've ever seen. Yeah. I have to compare it to mine because, to be mm, honest, please. I was on Sikihor. Yeah. And it looked like the sky was on fire. I've never seen the sky yeah. like that in my life. So Sikihor is a rivalry right. to the Barakai Ooh, sunset. Yeah. And you caught a lot out. of sunsets, too. You yeah. caught it every night, basically. I, every <laughs> single night, I took a picture. I took a photo every single night. That's the oh. thing to do in the Philippines. Yeah. On the islands, I think, in general. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd say the most, uh, favorite, most surprising thing for me is actually, I'm actually Filipino American. My parents came to the U S from the Philippines about 40 years ago. And this trip, I spent a month there is like a homecoming trip for me. I had waited 30 years to get there Mm -hmm. because I always wanted to go with friends or family. They kept saying no because of timing or finances. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go on my own. So it was really like a, like a homecoming coming of age trip for me I spent a few days with my dad and my stepmom there and I haven't traveled with my father in like 25 years even though we live in the same city in LA right I haven't traveled with him in a long time and I learned a lot about him I feel like he's been living in America for so long but when he goes back to the Philippines he kind of goes back to his roots so it was really exciting to see that and I know he was really happy to have me there so there was a lot of love going around and um, you know, the people, they say the people are really the most generous, big hearted people you'll ever meet in your life. Yes. 
And I really didn't believe that. And mm-hmm. I get there and I'm like, oh, they're not lying. Yeah. You guys have to go to the Philippines and experience it for Seriously. yourself. They will take a bullet for you and you're a stranger to them. Oh, like, yeah. And they never, they don't complain about anything. It's yeah. just, it's fantastic. They're always like giving, giving, giving. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last thing was that not everything, I mean, this big lesson, not everything is as it seems on social media. I failed an open water scuba diving course in my second day in the Philippines, and I'll get more into that when we talk about Cebu, but um, that was actually really emotional for me as well, because I went into it with so much gusto, and then yeah. um, it was over within 24 hours, so more on that. So I guess we could dive right into the first topic, mm-hmm. which is um, budgeting. Yeah, your and favorite. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I went to the Philippines twice last year. So one in January, one in November. January was a little bit more expensive just because it's their festival season um, where they celebrate. Um, or the festival that I went to was called Ati Atihan. And so I went um, to the Philippines just one way and left to go to Singapore. So those flights totaled to about like a little less than $800. And when I went to the Philippines in November, I just went to Bohol. That came out to be a little under $300. So going into the Philippines from Thailand and then from the Philippines to Taipei. Interesting. Yeah. Miss Worldwide over here. <laughs> Try to hit up all the countries. My January uh, trip, the hotels that I stayed at, there was about, there was three hotels that I stayed at. I spent about less than $600, nine nights, 10 days at three different hotels. For one person, Yeah, $600. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. And when I went in November for three nights in Bohol, um, I spent $217. Okay. Um, as far as like tours went, um, Bohol was definitely so much cheaper. Um, but in Palawan, that's where I did most of the tour in my January trip. That came out to be a little over $100, like $110 for three days. Um, two boat tours and mm-hmm. one like safari tour. Okay. Yeah. That's super, great. super affordable and super fun. When we were in Bohol, I went with, I met up with my family. So there was about like 10 of us total. Yeah. We hired a private driver. I'll get into the, the cost of him later, but... Um, his cost was separate than our tour entrances. And each of the tour entrances, at the land tours, like Chocolate Hills in Bohol, um, Targiers, the Bamboos, the Butterfly Garden and all that, was like no more than $1.50 per person. For entry. For entry. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so for budgeting, I spent 30 days in the Philippines. Six of those days were with family. So I'm kind of an anomaly because I spent almost a week with family and about three and a half weeks on my own. So for 30 days there, I spent 4200 That's rounded up a few dollars. The pre-trip expenses for vaccines, electronics, um, anything that I may need, but a one-time expense, so uh, dry bags, uh, water shoes, uh, packing cubes, I spent 1100 It's quite a bit of money, but I will never have to spend that money on any trip again because now I have these items for other trips. In the Philippines, including my flights for the Philippines itself, I spent $3,100 for 30 days. That includes my flight um, to and from the U.S. So that's all inclusive there. Nice. Um, For about flights alone, I spent about $1,500. 1000 was my flight to and from the U.S. I spent a little over 500 on flights within the country. And that's actually pretty high because I bought some flights the day before I left. <laughs> when you do that, the price will go up anywhere between 20 and 80 U.S. dollars. So I, it's tough. Like yeah. if you have a good amount of time, buy your flights in advance. If um, And if you're on a tight schedule, you'll obviously buy them in advance, but um, I was, you know, some days I'd be quicker to buy them than others, so I did spend quite a lot on flights within the country. Accommodation for the 24 days that I paid, uh, I spent about 330 US dollars. Keep in mind, I'm a budget backpacker. I stay in hostels in shared dorms. The average price per night in a shared dorm in the Philippines is between 10 and 20 US dollars. 
So keep that in mind when you're going there. Um, and the reason my total budget is a bit higher than normal is because I did two multi-day boat excursions in Palawan, one from El Nido to Coron and then one around the Coron Islands. Um, El Nido to Coron, that was 630 for four nights and four days on a boat. And that's all inclusive, alcohol, food, accommodation, tour guides, everything, entrance to entrance to parks and islands, etc. And the second trip I took, this was all with Big Dream Boat Man as well, was about 425 US for three nights, three days around Coron. So without those two boat trips, you could do the Philippines for a lot cheaper. But I my purpose was literally to go to Philippines and be on a boat the whole time. And I made my own dreams come true. So awesome. you can too. Yeah. <laughs> And she doesn't get, like, motion sick, so it's no. perfect for her. <laughs> I do, Actually, when we crossed the open sea going from El Nido to Coron, mm-hmm. I did get really, really, really sick, but I got Ooh. over it within, like, an hour. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I took, like, one Dramamine, and gotcha. that was it. Yeah. Okay. And I want to, like, say something about the flights. It could be, like, the flights within the Philippines could be cheaper. Um Depends on what you select, because sometimes they'll charge for an extra bag, or if you want to choose your seat. As you book, they'll charge for that. If you want a meal, they'll, char- they'll charge extra for that. Mm-hmm. So our prices always include, or at least my price, yep. includes a check-in bag. Yep, mine does too. Yeah. And the standard on these Philippine Airlines, mainly uh, Cebu Pacific and PAL, which is Philippine Airlines, is you only get allocated in your ticket usually 10 kilograms of luggage, which is mm-hmm. about 20 pounds. Yeah. And mine, I was packing, I think... 12 kilos which is about 26 pounds um and you pay per kilo for the the excess at the airport and to be honest for me paying per kilo for excess at the airport was cheaper than pre-buying excess luggage online so you got to weigh that out like if you're going up to 15 kilos which is around 30 to 33 pounds for your luggage Mm -hmm. buy that online beforehand if you're only carrying like a kilo or more over you're allocated, just pay that extra at the airport because that will be cheaper than buying it online before. That's smart. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. I calculated that in my brain. Oh, <laughs> in her brain. <laughs> so when I went to the Philippines in January, um, my itinerary was Palawan, Boracay, and then Aklan. And then after that, I went off to Singapore. And that was nine That was days? January. Um, yeah, January, nine days. I mean, nine nights, ten days. Okay. And then in November, I only did Bahol for three nights, four days. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mine was a little bit crazier. Uh, I was in the Philippines for 30 days. I did, uh, I went to Moabua first, then, which is in Cebu. And then I went off to Bacolod for a wedding. And then after that, I went down to Davao in Mindanao, which is actually a place that the U.S. government in particular recommends that foreigners not travel to. Mm -hmm. But because I was with family and I don't look like a foreigner, then I, to be honest, I felt safe. I don't know that I would recommend anyone else going there. You make that decision on your own. Um, After Davao, I drove up to Barobo with my family, which is in Surigao del Sur, explored around there for a few days. Then I went to Surigao del Norte, where Siargao is. Then I flew from Siargao to Palawan, like Puerto Princesa. And then I did a night in Port Barton. Uh, went up to El Nido, did a night there. Took a boat tour from El Nido to Coron for four days. Stayed in Coron for about five days. And then I flew back from Coron to... <laughs> I flew back from Coron to Cebu, took the ferry to Bohol right away. That was all in the span of like eight hours. Stayed one night in Bohol, took the ferry to Sikihor, stayed five nights in Sikihor, took the ferry ferry back to Bohol, flew right away to Manila, stayed in Manila for about a day and a half, and then flew back to the U.S. So really my itinerary was like this, it, which is not the norm for people who are traveling <laughs> the Philippines, but I threw in family time in there. So that really, uh, yeah, twirled the pot of quite a bit. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not, I'm an anomaly when it came to my trip there. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing I will say about food is 
I mean, I'm Filipino. I have a lot of Filipino friends. Filipino food is not my favorite food in Asia. I'll be very honest. A lot of it is a bit like greasy and a bit oily. They eat a lot of pork there. I'm yeah. pescatarian. Mm-hmm. They only eat fish. When I was doing all these like tours, the boat yeah. tours, and they include lunch, it had a lot of tilapia, and it was just staring at me on the plate. <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Not but, a seafood fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a seafood fan. But one of my favorite food, Filipino food, is sisig. Mm, but yes. here's here's the difference that I noticed. American seasick, or I should say seasick in America. <laughs> American seasick. No seasick in America versus seasick in the Philippines okay. is different to me. And I like the one in America mm-hmm. because it feels crispier for me. Okay. Um, okay. However, in the Philippines, I felt like they were mixing the seasick with some liver or who knows kidney or heart or tongue or something ears now cheeks. you're just making up body parts <laughs> right there. I know. there was something in there that just didn't um that i wasn't used to so really I was eating and i was like this is how chewy and it's definitely oh, more um okay. watery there too like the eggs it's it, i don't know i just felt like it was a bit runnier did you make it did, did it make you sick at all no okay. it didn't i mean it was still good just consistency was yeah different. consistency was definitely okay different. yeah cool but yeah, you American. know what's cool? I actually, in Moabal, the first week I was there mm-hmm. in Cebu, I had, a, there was a vegan place called Friends Okay. across from our hostel, Chief Mao, and it was all vegan Filipino food. Wow. So I had an eggplant sisig. Oh, I saw that. And it was delicious. That sounds good. Highly recommend Friends. Oh, wait, there's a Vins. <laughs> I can't remember the name of that. <laughs> we'll throw it up here yeah. so you can go find it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> It's daylight savings today that we're <laughs> yeah. recording this. Y'all, we're so loopy. It's like, yeah, very loopy. Oh, man. And then what else? I mean, Holo Holo, my last night in Manila, mm. me and my buddy Mike went on a Aww. mission to find the best Holo Holo in the city. And That's like, great. we were so desperate for Holo Holo, we went to Chow King. Chow King was out of Holo Holo at 1130 at wow. night. Places were out, but we finally got it at Manam. Amazing. Okay. Really good. Nice. Uh, what else? I actually got sick from a hollow hollow. Shoot. Yeah. Was I the got the runs and I think it was the ice. The ice. Yeah. But it was okay. It was still really good. I yeah. ate hollow hollow still. It wasn't oh. like it was going to scare me. So hollow hollow yeah. means mix mix in Tagalog and it's basically a mix of like ubi ice cream, uh, condensed milk, red bean, lychee, all these like gelatins. Uh, flan, there's flan on it, leche flan, leche flan. I can't talk about these food. Oh. It's so good, because you know <laughs> what? so good. Because the next thing I'm going to talk about is chicken in a sauce. Flame grilled chicken. It's, okay. I don't know what they do with the flame. They probably marinate the flame or something to put on the oh, chicken. It's okay. just really good. And okay. when you go, it's unlimited rice. I've seen, I've seen it. I don't, I synced it. <laughs> she synced it. Ghetto. I synced the lines. It's so good. I'm waiting for America yeah. to open up. We'll a get chain. on there. Like, we'll come get on. on there, y'all yeah. got Jolly Bee. We Jolly Bee. Chow yeah. King. We have Red Ribbon. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, come on. And it's hard being, I mean, luckily in the Philippines, they eat a lot of, uh, they do eat a lot of seafood, more fish than any other seafood, which is good because I still eat fish. I just don't eat any other meats. But other than that, I mean, as I've mentioned before in other episodes, if you're not, uh, if you don't eat meat, a lot of other developing countries will just carbo-load you, and that's not necessarily what you want to do. So you got to find the balance. I mean, I was eating a lot of veggie spring rolls, but mm-hmm. Philippines also isn't no. They're not very known for like their greens and their salads either. So it was like quite yeah, a. True. It was a bit difficult right. for me, but you're so active in the Philippines. You're in the water all the time. You're swimming around, yeah. snorkeling, hiking. That like you could eat as many veggie spring rolls as you want. You know what is also surprising, talking to locals and eating out at restaurants there? Um, I'd say you go out for a, a normal dish of Filipino food at like a casual restaurant. Mm-hmm. It will range between uh, 180 Philippine pesos and 400 Philippine pesos. That's like four between 4 and yeah. $8. That is not the cheapest in Asia. Mm-hmm. You can go and get a full meal in Thailand on the street. Yep. For $1. less 50. than a dollar, dollar yep. fifty. Yep. So keep in mind that really the Philippines doesn't have the cheapest street food or the cheapest food 
in Southeast Asia, but I mean the island makes the islands make up for it in so many different ways. So in oh. Sikihor, at the old Balete tree, the enchanted tree, yeah, this is the cheapest I'd ever see them in Asia. Actually, selling huge coconuts for thirty pesos. I saw you posted about. It. I was yeah, like, where? That's dirt cheap. Think that's like, like fifty fifty five. That's like sixty cents, you guys. Yeah. For like so probably the size of this globe. Yeah. Huge. Pour Crazy. a little rum in there, some condensed milk. Ooh. Got yourself a Coco Loco. Hey. Coconut water is actually more hydrating than H2O itself because it has like the extra electrolytes in I believe it. Believe it. So transportation between islands. Yes. I when I landed in um Kataklan to go to Barakai. There was a speedboat around the airport that took us to Barakai Island, there and back. And then for us to go from the Kataklan area to Aklan, it's about an hour and a half to two hours taxi drive. Okay. Um, I forgot yeah. what what we paid for for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then anywhere else around like the islands, we just tricycled yeah. everywhere, and that ranged from like seventy five or fifty cents per person to like seventy five cents per person. Transportation is very inexpensive in mm-hmm. the Philippines, which is great. Yeah. As far as transportation for myself going all like this around the Philippines, <laughs> um, I flew everywhere and flights are decently cheap, anywhere between 35 US and 100 US from island to island, depending on when you buy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, since I believed I was on a time crunch, even though I had a month, I flew everywhere. But if you're not on a time crunch or you know you don't want to contribute to the gases that planes emit, or you just want to save money, you can ferry between a lot of places, you know, yeah. from the south or the center of Palawan to the north, which is Caron. There's a speed ferry. You can take that. It's very rocky. So I would uh, look into other reviews of that. But you can also, instead of flying to Shiargal, which is on the east side of all the Philippine islands, you could also take the overnight ferry um, from certain places think it might pass by Camiguin, um, but I think you can go from Bohol or the tip, the southern tip of Cebu. Takes maybe ten to twelve hours. Uh, much cheaper, but you know, very very simple conditions. So you might want to look into if you're on a sleeping bag on the floor type of thing. But you also <laughs> wouldn't be spending as much, yeah, um, as flying. So that's inter island getting around. Um, I do not drive a motorbike. Renting a motorbike on your own is much cheaper than um, than ri- hopping on a trike or riding a motorbike. For mm-hmm. example, you get to the island of Sikihor and it's 300 pesos to rent a motorbike for a day. 300 pesos is six US dollars, mm-hmm. right? But to get from the north of the island on a motorbike to the south of the island, hopping on the back someone taking me was 500 pesos, which is 10 US. Ah. So for one ride, they were charging me more mm-hmm. than an entire day Gotcha. To rent a bicycle. But because yeah. I don't drive a motorbike, I factored that into my budget. Right. Most people um, will learn to ride a, ride a motorbike in the Philippines. There's a lot of islands that are really great for that, that have mm-hmm. a lot of roads. Personally, I don't do it. Yeah. I also don't think y'all should shame anyone that doesn't do it. From port, when you land in a port and you're heading to your accommodation, you'll usually take a tricycle. Yeah. That will cost between 1 and $3. Okay. Anywhere you go. Yeah, and Bawal Bawal is probably the most expensive. It costs one fifty per person to get on a trike. That's with you and your luggage. Yeah. So one thing about transportation that's important to note is every port or terminal that you go to, there will be a terminal fee. Yeah. And in the Philippines, this ranges between 10 pesos and 50 pesos, which comes, 50 pesos is about one US dollar. Mm-hmm. So just prepare for that. It's not a large expense. Yeah. But have extra cash on hand. Yes. On my recent experience, however, when we were at Cebu going to uh, Taipei, Mm -hmm. we thought we had to pay a terminal fee. Mm -hmm. However, look at your um, receipt, your your fare receipt, Mm -hmm. and see if there's the terminal fee already included in there. Oh. Because we went to the table, we were ready to pay, but Mm -hmm. they're like, they just stamped us and let us through because... We already had the terminal fee accounted for in our air ticket already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And of course, the Philippines is a heavy, heavy cash economy. Yeah. So um, most, actually, I think most ATMs and all ATMs in the country will only let you take out 
10,000 pesos at a time, which is about 200 US. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include your ATM fee, which will range anywhere from five to 12 US dollars, which is quite a bit of money if you don't have a bank that covers your ATM fees. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have gotta think about the conversion to your, your home currency. So prepare for that as you're hopping from island to island that you can only take out about $200 at a time. And most places in the Philippines only take cash. I've been to so many, you know, developing countries in South America, Southeast Asia, and I have never met or I have never been in a country other than the Philippines that like it's cash everywhere. Even in South America, a lot more places were accepting of card. Some towns actually only have one or two ATMs, so beware of that as well. Because when an ATM runs out of cash, there's not always going to be someone there to refill the cash in the ATM for all these tourists withdrawing. Yeah. So be prepared. Always have more cash on you than you need to. Mm -hmm. Hot tip for storing your cash. Do not put all your cash in one place in case you get robbed. Hate to say it. Yeah. But, you know, stick it under your shoes. Stick it in your bra. Stick yeah. it in a hidden money pocket wrap it in an empty bottle in your toiletry bag yeah. spread all your money around do not keep it all in one place true if you go to certain banks though you can withdraw more than the 10,000 pesos so and you can check with um your local hotel or hostel for which banks will yeah. will allow you to do that we booked like some of the hotels that we booked um always had like the pay at hotel so even yeah. if you book it online, you can't even use your card. You have to bring the cash. Yep. And pay it there. Yep. And make sure when you're booking, guys, when you're on like booking.com or hotels or Agoda mm -hmm. or Hostel World, wherever you got to make sure you look at the fine print and see how that hotel yes. or hostel, that accommodation needs to accept their money because most of them will say pay at the hotel in the hotel's currency, meaning mm -hmm. they don't have a card a swiper for you to come and charge it on your card. So you've yeah. got to be prepared for that. Yep. Cash rules everything around me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should dive into <clears throat> Palawan. It was my debut. First <laughs> time in the Philippines. And I want to say it is, it has been like my favorite island of the Philippines. I think it is the um, premier island it's, of the yeah. Philippines. There's so many things to do. So I definitely have to go back because one thing that I didn't get it, get, I did, didn't get to do was climb um, Mount Tapias. In Coron. In Coron. Yeah. Yeah. And I really want to do that. We stayed at West Town Coron. It had like pool, a fitness center, breakfast was included. Yeah, so we had a nice view of the bay. Four nights, five days. It was like $93 a night. Okay. Yeah. So not too bad. And it wasn't too far from town um, or from the docks. Maybe less than 10 minute tricycle ride. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Um, and from there we did, day one, we did a boat tour. And excuse my pronunciation of these islands. <laughs> and we bought all our tours through the hotel. Quran day one boat tour was $32 per person. Mm -hmm. That included, you know, the... The pickup and the drop off, um, lunch, and I don't even know how many islands, but this is where we went. Kayangan Lake. We went to the. Do you go to Twin Lagoon? Twin Lagoon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> that I could say yeah. with no problem. <laughs> Malawai Reef, and the uh, oh my gosh I forgot I I practiced all this but is I it forgot. On your thing? I don't think I wrote it. Oh, I was trying to be cocky. And, like, thought you could remember yeah. it. <laughs> Basil. Basilsa. Basil, yay, yay. You're making things. <laughs> Basil, yay, yay. You're adding syllables. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in myself. All right, here we go. Kayangin Lake. Twin Lagoon. Yep. Balin Sasayao Reef. Mal Wawai Reef. Beach 91. What? And... <laughs> A skeleton shipwreck. Nice. Yeah. That was all in one day. Nice. For $32. Yeah. Lunch included. Lunch included. Yep. And the lunch had like live music. Mm -hmm. People were singing. FYI, lunch is always included on these day tours in the True. Philippines. Yeah. If it's not included, you're on the wrong day tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> and most of them will have alcohol included as yeah. well. Most of them, not all. And then our day two boat tour again. 
um, $34 and it was a little bit further because I remember going out to the first island and it took like about an hour and um, I'm gonna plug this in here because usually I get like motion sick Ooh. I didn't get motion sick mm. at all because the way that they created their boats it's so it's such a weird technology <laughs> We'll pop up a picture to show you guys how it looks like, but I feel like it's super efficient. Yeah, like, um, to fight the waves because it just balances everything out. And I yeah. forgot what they're called. What are they? There's a name for them. So the boats are called Banka boats. Mm -hmm. Fun, efficient. Didn't but make me yeah. sick. I loved it, and it was like an hour out in the water. It's like, come on, that usually will get me sick. Me going to Catalina Island from the Long Beach Pier or the harbor, I got sick. I threw up like three times. Ooh. So on that uh, day two tour, it was um, the Bullock Dos Sandbar Island. Oh. Yeah, we saw like my first weird looking starfish. And then after that, we went to Makapuya Island. Mm -hmm. I saw a basketball court there. Did you play and with the locals? I didn't play with the locals. Oh. They were playing in bare feet. Oh, and I they, was like, ooh. And they'll smack gonna... the blow right by you yeah, too i know biggest I'm sport fun. in the philippines mm. basketball yeah hands down they love basketball it's like true their national sport yeah <laughs> and the last island which is um my favorite island of Karan, uh banana island yeah yeah it was so nice there that's Very crazy yeah. the only island that i went to out of the ones that you mentioned i mean besides kayangan and twin lagoon okay was banana um, and then our day three tour was the safari tour where i got to feed the giraffe and see zebras really up close and a whole bunch of other animals because it's just open. Yeah. Super open. Can you walk um, around or? They... You can't. You just have to be really careful. And like all like the rest of all the other animals, you just can't stand behind them. For the uh, safari day tour, it was $50. And with that, we did a the safari. Mm -hmm. We uh, The drive from our hotel to that side of the island was an hour. But after the safari, we got to take the boat out to Black Island. Yeah, which I went to Black Island too. Because it, it has a cave. Like... I saw that you jumped into that that cave hole where the water. Yeah, was. yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know it was that deep. Uh, yeah, we didn't touch the bottom, okay. so we got to jump in there. Filipinos are very, very superstitious. Yeah. So we walked in, and the guides were like, "Don't make any noise. The spirits will oh. hear you. You don't want to wake them up." And all of a sudden, we're twerking, screaming, jumping in, and we're like, well, so much for all that. And the guides didn't care. Huh. No, they didn't care, but they were like, yeah, yeah. And they Maybe joined. They were like, karma's going to get you. <laughs> They'll let us figure it out yeah, for ourselves what right. kind of bad luck is coming our way. <laughs> <laughs> but that was pretty cool. And I was like wondering why they call it Black Island. But as we pulled away in the boat, uh -huh. you just see like their, the mountains, yeah. their, the rocks that they have is just pure black. Yeah. But it's I will tell you, I think one of them is Black Island's part of it. In the Philippines, they have a lot of native names for the islands, right? Okay. But when the foreigners come in and they buy them out or they mm. build on them, they rename the islands so the foreigners can pronounce them. So Black Island's one of them. Interesting. Pass Island's another one. Banana. They rename them. That's sad. Wow. Just I mean, for us. Yeah, they, they rename it for us, but at the same time, it's like, well, why shouldn't the rest of the world yeah know how to pronounce a filipino word or like right. a tagalog yeah. word you know it's true but um maybe because they heard me talking they're like oh we're gonna yeah. <laughs> we're like let's make this easier for <laughs> our last day we just wanted to chill so we didn't want to do any tours that's why when we decided to go to the hot springs the makinit hot springs we didn't do a tour with that we went ourselves so we just found a mm, nice. uh, tricycle mm -hmm. who would take us there maybe 20 30 minutes on a tricycle yeah. how much did you pay 300 pesos for the tricycle to take us from the Karan West Town Hotel to the Makina Did Hot he Springs. wait for you and take you back? Yep. Okay, good. He did. Good. And then we just paid our entrance upon arrival, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it was like super cheap, $3 mm -hmm. per person. That was really cool. There was like a lot of people and I didn't realize yeah. how big the hot springs was. And it's fresh water or salt water, I can't fresh. remember. That's what I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And super clear, like... Yeah, very rocky, so bring water mm -hmm. shoes. Another hot tip, um, if you're getting a trike or bike one way in the Philippines, ask if that includes taking you back and if it includes the driver waiting for you. A lot of times you can haggle and negotiate that in. And to be honest, they should. it should include um, taking you back depends on depending on how touristy 
the spot is, mm -hmm. but I would recommend negotiating that in there. But I'm like a queen negotiator over here, so. So Leah, how was your Palawan itinerary like? Oh, so I spent eight days total in um, Palawan or Palawan, depends on where you're from, how you pronounce it. Sorry. I'm going to pronounce it Palawan. That's just how I was taught by some locals. So, mm -hmm. but you know, whatever yeah. is you get the main idea. Just I spent eight days total. Um, I arrived in Puerto Princesa, which is an international airport from Puerto Princesa. I went straight to Port Barton. And spent a night there, and mm -hmm. I did um, basically nine nights total in Palawan. So one night in Port Barton, one day doing a boat trip that I booked through Coco Rico Hostel. The boat trip goes to places like Starfish Island, German Island. It includes lunch. It includes your alcohol. Um, it includes the park fees. And it's 2,000 pesos, which is about 40 U.S. dollars. So you can book that through Coco Rico, nice. which is also the party hostel in town. Hey. Port Barton's interesting. It's a very small, dirt road, one road town. But the islands off Port Barton are mm -hmm. gorgeous. And that's where I saw my first sea turtle in the Philippines. Aww. And I followed him for like five minutes. <laughs> don't touch them. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't touch, touch them. them in the Philippines. You can look. You can take as many pictures you want. Do not touch them. Don't touch them anywhere. <laughs> yeah. The sea turtles in the Philippines are federally protected, though. Oh, okay. So you could literally go to jail for touching them. Ooh. And Port Barton's really cool, but I don't recommend more than two days there, two nights there. It's a very small town. Islands are gorgeous off of there. And um, you go to... Once you get a Puerto Princesa, go to San Jose Terminal, take the van to Port Barton. It's about three, three and a half hours. It'll co cost you between, I think, between 400 and 500 pesos, which is between 8 and 10 US dollars. Nice. Uh, the road is horrible. I don't get car sick, but I almost did. There you go. And I was sitting in the front. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah. And in the Philippines, I love to pump the freaking air conditioning. <laughs> yes. So I spent one night, one day in Port Barton. Uh, after the boat tour day, I went from Port Barton to El Nido and I needed to be in El Nido because I was starting a multi-day excursion in El Nido. Mm -hmm. So I spent a quick <clears throat> 10 hours in El Nido. Took me about four hours to get there. There's only three vans a day from Port Barton to El Nido. Mm -hmm. I missed the last van because I was on a boat tour. Ah. So they had to make a special exception for me. And they hired me um, a private motorbike to get me to the local bus stop, which was really expensive. It was 500 pesos, which is $10. Mm -hmm. But I had to do it because yeah. I had to be in El Nido that night. Then I had to wait for the local bus to arrive. Um, but that bus took four hours. Uh, and it was 160 pesos, which is a little over three US dollars. Mm -hmm. It was a horrendous bus ride i've been on some really bad bus rides in south america this yeah. is one of the worst keep Oof. in mind it did have a lot of alcohol in my system so don't drink and get on a bus i do this so many times and it is not smart Damn. <laughs> but i had to get to el nido that night yeah it's, it's not even the driver or the vehicle it's the road yeah the yeah. road is switch back after switch back Oof. so it's hard and so i left at 7 p.m after the boat tour didn't get to el nido till about 11 p.m uh, I knew this. I don't know why I did it. I booked myself into a party hostel. So the second I get to El Nido, they hand me two shots to take, even oh. though I knew I was going to bed. <laughs> I stayed at Big Paul's hostel. Super fun. Okay. But it was cracking on a Monday night. So y'all want to party? <laughs> Go to Big Paul's. I went straight to bed in a, another air-conditioned freezing Oh, door no. room but they have a free breakfast there as well so it's a yeah. good recommendation i just i didn't go there what people go there to do so the next day next three days four nights i actually took a multi-day boat tour with big dream boatman guys i cannot recommend enough this company they treated me and all of us like royalty there was 17 people on this tour it was a three night four day boat tour from el nido to caron where you stop on all of the islands and yeah. islands in Lina Pacan and around Coron as well. It's completely all inclusive, so all your accommodation, uh, which you're spending every night on the islands, either in a tent or in like a little nipa hut. Aww. Um, all your food, all your alcohol. I'm talking beer, rum, water, coffee, tea, and the service is unrivaled. The crews were incredible. Yeah. Um, the crews on the ship, the tour guides, we had a very international group. We met people mm. from all over the world and you know, you're stopping four to five times a day in different islands 
and you're stopping in different beaches and different shipwreck spots to go snorkeling, yeah. uh, paddle boarding, kayaking, whatever you want. The guides, they're all incredible. Like G, Bob, Joms, they're all like free divers, spear fishers. Oh like gosh. they all, I'm not even kidding. What? On our first stop outside of El Nido, mm-hmm. they caught, uh, Mark caught a squid. Like he went spear fishing, <laughs> caught a squid, emptied the ink out, <gasps> and that was also where I saw my second turtle in the Philippines. <laughs> was it uh, Cadlao Island, crazy. which Cadlao means smile? So I can't recommend Big Dream Boatman enough. Uh, we loved it so much after the first tour, mm-hmm. and they were selling it to us so hard on the first tour. They were like, "Oh, our favorite trip is actually Caron to Caron," and our tour guide Joms was like, "Oh yeah, I'm actually launching the." next Corona to Corona tour like two days after this one starts so myself and two others the second we get off the El Nido to Corona tour we booked Corona to Corona to leave two days later nice that's how much we love this tour and that's how much we we um really supported the vision and the dream of of the company and the brand you know they give back to their local communities by employing locals yeah. all the proceeds for their gear go towards the dog sanctuary as well oh mm-hmm. sweet and so um for el nido to Coron, you basically pay my total for that three nights four days all inclusive was about 630 us but you pay half of that online and then the other half you give in cash which makes sense because they use that cash for like entrance fees oh, okay. and et cetera on the tour. And then the second tour, um, we had a little bit of a discount. So we paid about 425 US, nice. three days, three nights around Coron Islands. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about Big Dream Boatman is they change their itinerary pretty much every trip you go on. Cool. So even if I were to give you guys an itinerary now, it might change slightly on your tour if you were to book it. So I would just say go, be surprised appreciate yeah. the people, the food, the natural beauty of the Philippines. Oh. And if you guys want to book, use the code LA10. You get 10% off of your tour. And, you know, tell them LA in flight sent you. LA10. Not LA10 is your code. In between my first Big Dream Boatman tour and my second Big Dream Boatman tour, I did two days in Coron. I spent it at Hop Hostel, which hands down has the best views of Coron and surrounding mm. islands on the island. Uh, they have a cool rooftop bar. You can see sunset. It's kind of like a boutique hostel. Okay. Beautiful beds. Like everyone had a curtain and their own light and their own uh, charge point as yeah. well. So it felt like a very mini private room. Nice. Like six stories. There's um, a movie room. There's a restaurant inside. Uh, it's very close to town. Less than five minute walk into the main town. Okay. Yep. All right. And um, that was about... 20 us for a bunk in a shared room so a bit pricier but 100 percent worth it yeah at hop hostel and then during the day we explored um Coron town is very touristy mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool like kitschy cafes and little shops and nice restaurants so you can eat high end if you want to yeah you can eat street food if you want to but we did go to we hiked uh, mount tapias Aww. and saw it's like a like a hollywood sign yeah they had a corona sign there we went there at sunset which is a very popular thing to do it's about 730 steps to the top easy pretty easy yeah and there it's like concrete (laughs) steps so okay easy it takes you 30 minutes tops to get up there but it's a nice little hike and yeah the views are unmatched and you see everything yeah you can also see the brand new mcdonald's from there what (laughs) Which I hated, but man, they love McDonald's in the Philippines. <laughs> I'm guilty. We ate McDonald's in Bohol. Did you really? So, yeah, oh because we God. just we were hungry. We didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah we I mean it's a convenience thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> they had boba at McDonald's. And it was pretty Did they? Good. Yeah. No way. Yeah, it was pretty good. Okay, I would probably go to McDonald's too to get some boba <laughs> just to compare. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was good. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was like a winter melon Did they have milk hollow, tea. Hollow? No, they need to. Yeah. Or else we would have gotten it. Yeah, that's so Filipino. It. I know. Yeah, it's so weird. You should. Um, but I like how you mentioned in Karan Town they have like a whole bunch of like cafes and they like do. a little higher end uh, restaurants. We went to an Italian restaurant there Altro? one night. Yes. Yes. Altro. Is it? Is it's it a like, chain okay. in the Philippines. Okay. I'm obs- I had. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Yeah, it was really good. We had pizza and um, yeah. like like the white pizza or the yep. cheese pizza. Yep. 
and I, and I forgot what pasta it was, but it was probably carbonara. You something. went to, it's on the main drag there, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had, you had to wait That's in line. It's so funny that you went there too. Yeah. And well, I, I didn't realize they had, they have one in like, um, Shiargal and they have them in Cebu and okay. Moabla. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I yeah. remember asking the doorman, I was like, wow, like are the, how did you guys get so good at making like Italian food right. or pizza? Are the owners like Filipino? And he's like. Oh, uh, yeah, it's like this um, Slovenian guy married to a Filipina. Ah. And I'm just like, but then how did they get good at making pizza, right. which is an Italian thing? He's like, I don't know, Europe. And I'm like, that <laughs> has nothing That's to do answer. with anything. <laughs> yeah. no, Who really cares? Good. Yeah, and I was wondering, like, why is there a line so here good. for Italian food in mm-hmm. the Philippines? But, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it is. And it, honestly, if you're, and this happens, right, especially if you're traveling for a long time. If you're sick of the local food, yeah. you go there, get a break. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you can split your pizzas, too, like get half yeah. half and half. Yeah. And a pizza, mine was about 460 pesos, which is a little under $10. Okay. I'm glad Huge you Huge pizza. That. Worth it. Yeah, be, just because I was like, oh, this is expensive for Phil- like Philippine, food in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. But then I was like, this pizza is really... And like the guy I was with, uh, uh-huh. my buddy who's a flight attendant, okay. he was like, this is literally the best dough I've ever had in the world. He's like, and I've been to Italy three times. What? So, I'll trove. I took a photo from the outside and all you see is just foreigners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Foreigners, yeah. <laughs> the atmosphere is really nice in there. It's like very moody, very romantic yeah. too. Wait, so you were in the actual restaurant part, not the side. They have an annex. Not the side. I think okay. we were on the main part and the top roof Oh, or okay. Yeah. So we went to the annex because we don't want to wait. Oh, I see. And then I also asked my friend Renee, I was like, do you want pizza or do you want pasta? He's like, I'm cool with just pizza. I see. And the pizza portion, mm-hmm. no line at all. They just sit you right away. Oh, I didn't even know there was another... Yeah, for it. yeah, okay. yeah. Well, it's funny because he was like, wow, there's so much, like, competition here. They had to open <laughs> a pizza place right next to it. We find out it's actually the same, same restaurant. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's know. how great they're doing the Philippines. Yeah. More power to them, exactly. you know? I mean, I'm sure it's hard to find good pizza before they came through. Mm-hmm. So, we can talk a little bit about a combo of Cebu and Sikihor. Yeah. Cebu, I flew into Cebu from LAX, uh, which generally, actually, if you're flying from outside of the Philippines into Cebu, Mactan International is a bit more expensive than flying into Manila. So okay. just do your comparison yeah. when you're finding trying to find flights online. Right. Cebu is an amazing jump-off point. It's part of a region in the Philippines called the Visayas, and there's just so much to do around it. Mm-hmm. that um, it's there's there's so many choices. So in Cebu, I spent one night in Cebu City. My recommendations, I actually met a bunch of locals when I was there. Cool. Uh, local girls on top of a rooftop hostel. And they took me out to like some bars. Aww. And they took me to IT Park in, um, there's a place, a night market there from Thursday to Sunday called Subo Mercado. Okay. Incredible. Packed, but highly recommended. Yeah. It was so delicious. And um, I visited the Temple of Leah. There's a Temple of Leah there, you guys. It's about 30. Wow. Temple of Me. It's about a 30 minute motorbike ride from the center of town. And it's literally this rich dude who had a lot of money and loved his wife. So he built a temple for her. Wow. Yeah. And uh, they're still working on the temple. And Cebu City is interesting. I mean, the traffic is getting up there as far as like Manila, but Mm -hmm. I found it not. As crazy and overwhelming there's so many like cool bars and hot spots to go to and it's a very very bustling like international city yeah uh, things to do there's a lot of like statues and churches and museums downtown that you could go frolic around in and mm-hmm. of course they have seen log festival third Sunday of every January this is the festival we'll talk more about festivals in a little bit but it's the biggest one of the biggest festivals in the country celebrate Santo Nino and um, they just party in the streets. Cebu, you head to the south of Cebu, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the main places people go right away from the south terminal in Cebu City, they go take the south terminal to Moabua, which is famous for its snorkeling and its diving, and it's famous for the sardine run. And White Beach is right next to it. You can go there to relax, you can go there to snorkel. Pescador Island for more diving is right off the coast of Moabua, very popular to do as well. Um, Side story in Moabua, I tried to take an open water diving course and it's four days. You're with a small group of people and I did it through one of the famous dive centers there. Amazing instructor, great people, wonderful owners, and really it was a lack of self-confidence the end that made me withdraw from the course after the first day. 
Um, three of the main things you got to do when you're learning to dive is equalize your ears, um, clear your mask, and learning to like breathe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and breathing and equalizing my ears, I was fine. It was actually clearing my mask that mm. I couldn't do because you have to let water in and then you got to blow out to clear it. And for some reason, I couldn't get it down. While you're in the water. Yeah, while you're in the water. Because your mask will fog up while you're in the water. Yeah. And my teacher actually pointed out at one point, she's like, Leah, you're swimming with water in your mask. I'm like, I know, because I'm too scared to, like, clear my mask. Yeah. And so that kind of, like, took a hit on my self-confidence and I withdrew from the class. And it's like, you know, I was, I was, I made this decision to try this open water course two days before I did it. I think for bigger decisions like that, I need... Um, more time to think about it, Mm -hmm. but they just charged me for a discovery dive, which ended up being like 60 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's something I think I'll try again somewhere else, but it really, you guys, this is my second day in the Philippines. This really took a toll on me. I started like crying because I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was a strong enough swimmer. I didn't think it was a confident person. And so, um, you know, not everything is is perfect when you're traveling abroad. Not everything will go as planned. Mm-hmm. You know, I was expecting pa- to pass the course with flying colors, yeah. and they would have. You know, my instructor was like, "Leah, you were doing great." Yeah. Um. At one point, when I decided, I decided in the middle of the course to give up, oh. and she's like, "I can't swim you back to shore. You have to stay with the class." And I'm like, "What do you mean? I just said I'm done with this course." She's like, "But I don't have time to swim you back to shore." So you have to stay in the class. I'm like, hey, can I stay up here? She's like, no, you have to stay with the class. Oh, wow. So you got to come down under. So they were doing drills. So we went down 15 feet, and she's like, don't do the drills, Leah. If you're done with the course, don't do the drills, but hold your breath. Or not hold your breath, but just you got to sit on the ocean floor with us and, and just sit. She's like, you don't have to do the drills because you just quit the class. I'm like, oh okay. Gosh. and that, But that was fine. She's like, you were doing that perfectly. Are you sure you don't want to resume? I'm like, I don't. I lost... All confidence. You know, it's a lesson learned from next time. I think next time I could go with a private mm-hmm. instructor. It was it was really heartbreaking my first week in the Philippines to do that. But I filled my time with other activities in Cebu. Yeah. So much to do. There's all these falls in the south of Cebu. Um, Kankalanag Falls, Dao Falls, Tumalog Falls, uh, Mantayupan. All of them accessible by motorbike. You just take a motorbike ride you know, around the island for an hour or two till you get to the falls, cool. pay your little entrance fee. Osmania Peak, Kawasan Falls, which is very famous. You go yeah. zip lining, you know, cliff diving there, jumped off, you know, 12 meter cliffs there, which is about 32 feet. Oof. Um, Osmania Peak, you can go for sunrise and sunset. Uh, Simulan Island, which is just off the coast of the south of the island. And then, of course, the Liloan Port at the bottom where you can jet off to Dumaguete or you can go to Bahol. Popular things to do in the south of Cebu is go to Oslob where you can swim with the whale sharks. After thorough research on Mayan, I don't really support that practice. And these are just reflecting my views, LA and flight yeah. views. These do not reflect the views of even Trizzy or the podcast as a whole. But I refrain from going to Oslob because of the way that they feed the whale sharks and it just ruins and messes with their feeding patterns because oh. they they the fishermen will feed the whale sharks so that they'll come to the area where all the tourists are swimming so that people can you know kind of take photos and swim with them and like do things for the grandma for social media I see. um and over time that will disrupt their natural ecosystem right so i would say just do your own research decide if it's for you there are more ethical i guess places to do it in the philippines mm. for example donsol you would have to wait a while to see a whale shark but i think it's worth it if you free dive or if you scuba dive or if you have a couple days to do it or if you want to go out into the water into the early mornings yeah. um but they don't have like you know the pump boats going out there trying to attract them no matter how early you get there the place is jam packed oh, yeah, and people are so annoyed because it's like people just in throves like piling into these boats and there's tons and tons of boats out there mm-hmm. and it could give people who's scared of crowds like anxiety yeah. or just like someone who's just like annoyed with all these people being around at like seven in the morning looking for these whale sharks yeah. it's it's not even a pleasant experience yeah it's not not a practice that i 
cared to go see. Yeah. You know, I'd rather leave the whale sharks to do their thing. Yeah. But everyone has a different opinion on that. Um, and then the north of Cebu, that's a whole different <laughs> story because you can go to Bantayan Island, which is a great place to relax. I actually had friends that went skydiving there. And then Malapascua, which is very, very popular for diving, but especially seeing the thresher sharks all year round. And in order to see thresher sharks, they don't really come to the surface a ton. You have to basically get your advanced open water diving course to go see the thresher sharks. And that takes longer than just your open water diving course. Open water diving course is about three to four days. Yeah. If you want to get your advanced, you have to do another three to four day course on top of that. So keep that in mind if you want to go to Malapascua. Like you can learn to dive in Palawan. You can learn to dive in Cebu. But if you want to see the thresher sharks in Malapascua, you either have to get your advanced while you're there so you make time for it or, um, you know, I would recommend just going somewhere else. So Cebu is a lot. There's so much There's so much to do there and there's I'm sure there's places that I missed. But near Cebu, uh, towards the south of that, is a little island called Sikihor. <laughs> and Sikihor surprised me the most out of anything. And actually, I was told by a local that when Boracay was shut down in 2018 for about six to eight months, because the president said, clean this up. People were dumping their trash everywhere. They were dumping their sewage into their ocean. And it was locals and foreigners alike. And, he, and these people ran businesses to keep the island uh, to attract tourists, right? Mm. And he's like, you got to clean all of this up. Otherwise, we're going to keep the island shut. So this was their livelihood. The tourism is their lively, livelihood in Barakai. When it was closed, a lot of tourists were discovering Sikihor instead. And Sikihor is known as the witchcraft capital of the Philippines. <laughs> I'll be back in the day. They don't really practice this kind of stuff anymore. This is like oh old legends, right? Yeah. But a lot of tourists were going to Sikihor instead. And so that's how people came to find out about it. And nice. I thought it had... Amazing food. Of course, nice locals, as all places in the Philippines do. The best roads I've ever seen in the Philippines. Everything was newly paved. They were redoing the lines. So you want to ride a motorbike, come to Sikihor. Um, They also had the best sunset I saw in the Philippines, Mm. hands down. And my favorite thing about it was there were not a lot of tourists there. For example, in Siargao, it's just overrun by tourists. But in Sikihor, there was a fair amount of locals and tourists, and I liked that feeling. I'm a tourist, don't get me wrong. I'm a tourist, (laughs) I'm a traveler, but there's just places where, like, the locals don't even come out because there's so many foreigners there, and I feel like Shargao is one of that, whereas Sikihor, there's still a lot of that local culture infused. Like, it's not overwhelmed by tourists yet. So I would say get there before it starts becoming a little crowded, but, you know, there's... um, Salagdong Beach, where mm-hmm. you can do some cliff diving there. Nice. There's Kambugahai Falls, which is one of the most famous falls in the Philippines. Um, I'm not sure the name of it, but you can take a motorbike to the top of one of the mountains where you can see the entire island. And uh, San Juan is the main city, so I stayed in a hostel right on the beach in San Juan, mm-hmm. which uh, also has a ton of other hotels and hostels surrounding it on that beach strand. Palatan Beach is one of the most well-known beaches in Sikihor as well. On clear days, it's nice enough to go to, you know, <laughs> not the most beautiful beaches, but okay. that's not what Sikihor is really known for. Gotcha. Uh, there's the old balete tree, the enchanted tree, where you can go to fish pedicure for 10 pesos. Um I think the cool, the greatest thing about Sikihor was the day trip we did to Apple Island. And Apple Island, I mean, I had, Sikihor was the end of my Philippines trip. Mm-hmm. Apple Island had the best coral garden and the best snorkeling I've ever seen in the Philippines. Nice. Absolutely gorgeous. They have a turtle sanctuary there. I'm not even kidding. Aww. I saw like eight turtles that day. Aww. And they're huge. Like the size of this table or even bigger. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Apo Island is definitely one of the highlights of Sikihor and you, it really is almost like a um, rock mass. Like there's only one resort on the whole island. So mm-hmm. most people do day tours there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and, and you can do scuba diving there as well. Uh, when I was there, there was, uh, the tourism was low because the coronavirus scare was going on and it's still going on. That's right. So the guides were a little bit worried because there weren't like the normal huge groups of Asians traveling around. Yeah. And so I think tourism was scarce, money flowing in was low and they were like, oh, I hope, you know, this kind of blows over. Man. But yeah. Yeah. And then there's two ports in Sikihor, uh, Lorena in the north 
It costs about four to five hundred pesos, which is eight to ten US dollars to get from the north to the south of the island, or you can rent a motorbike for three fifty a day. And then you can also go from the Sikihor port to San Juan, which is the main drag um, of town. And uh, Sikihor port, that is where you come in if you're coming from Dumaguete, which mm. is west of the island. Bohol is north of the island. A hot tip for Sikihor, Annabelle's 24-7. Basically, pick your food, cook it however they want or however you want. They'll cook it for you. Mm. 20 what kind of, Siki Hor is a quiet island. Yeah. They got a 24 7 restaurant. That seems yeah. Lit I think right all they need to do is add a karaoke machine to that restaurant. Yes. Behold. Behold. So you only spent a night there. Yeah. I spent three nights, four days coming from Thailand. Got there early morning to Behold. And we just chilled at the resort because the Behold Beach Club Resort was what, like 10, 15 minutes away from the airport? What do you do? <laughs> Marte. Marte. <laughs> it was right on the beach, white sand, blue waters, hammocks along the palm trees, and there's like multiple ones where you can just lay and just be you, you know. Be you in a hammock. Be you in a hammock. <laughs> the weather was perfect. That hotel includes breakfast, and they have like, a restaurant there where we ate dinner that night and they also have like a like an entertainment center the rooms were super clean super nice and um of course people there was so sweet oh um and then the next day we had a we did the land tour and we had a private driver because there was 10 of us mm -hmm. so we could just hire a private driver yeah it's which, worth it yeah and that didn't include um, the entrance fee. So we all paid that like a la carte, basically. Chocolate Hills, the Tarjir monkeys mm -hmm. sighting, which is really cool. So the funny cute. thing is like you have to be really, really quiet. Yeah. Or else they'll have a heart attack and die or something. Oh my God. And then from there we went to the Bamboo Bridge. And then after that we did the River Cruise. Um, super fun. It includes like a uh, lunch. Mm -hmm. It's a buffet lunch. I... I think I got sick from that. I did uh, the Teninkling dance. Oh. Because they had a stop. And I've always wanted to do that. That's Wait, like, did you film this? I did. I, got, I haven't like, seen the girl, footage yet. I was killing it. What? I cannot. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah I, was, I, I loved it. I was living my dream. You know how your dream was like to be on a boat? Yeah. My dream was to, to, to dance to the clean in the, in <laughs> in the Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like a lot of people were wanting to do it too, but I just hogged it. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is all me. This is my time to shine. <laughs> this is my time to shine. <laughs> so that happened like right after I ate. So maybe like the digesting mm -hmm. thing like wasn't like settled. That's why I probably felt sick or something. Oh. Oh, that could be. could be. That could be. Yeah. yeah. And then we checked out the butterfly garden. Um, a butterfly pooped on my hand. So oh. After the butterfly pooped on me, we went to the cave, Hinagdanan Cave. Pretty creepy, but so I, cool. I think it was pretty dope. Yeah. No, I wish I could have done that. Oh yeah, it was sick. It was sick. Even my nephews, one of them, were was climbing out of the cave, and I was like, "That was so cool." <laughs> and we were like, "Yeah, cool." That's Hopefully so cute. he gets the travel bug soon. Yeah. <laughs> And then after that, we visited a church. So that was the land tour that we did on our first full day. And then our um, second full day, we did a boat tour. That involved uh, seeing the dolphins early in the morning. And there's a lot of dolphins. An abundance of yeah, dolphins. Yeah, an abundance. And then we went to Bal Balakasag Island, where we snorkeled and saw like big sea turtles as well yeah um one Massive. one got really like up to the, oh, the so surface cute when they take a little breath yes and i was like wow it's so cute it was like it's funny because we did get a video of it but i wasn't the one who got the video oh, okay because me and my brother-in-law we were like oh that's so cool we'll stay here though we'll stay here what? <laughs> wait what from a what? I don't know. I think it's because we can't control our swimming. So we feel like the waves will probably take us and actually knock us into the turtle oh, or something. I, I'm I not even know. kidding. I probably came like within six inches of running into some turtles See? because of how choppy it was yes, in Apple Island. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the um, turtles are so cute. Yeah, it's cool. Um, uh, they're so cute. I want to like hug them, but don't touch them. Yeah, don't touch them. <laughs> 
So <laughs> at Balikasag Island, um, a few years back, there wasn't like a lot of vendors or mm-hmm. anything, or a lot of people mm-hmm. hassling you to take a boat out to see the turtles. Because mm-hmm. literally, you could swim out to shore and see the turtles yourselves. But when we got there, there were people who were saying like, oh, no, you need to like Man. listen to our safety rules. You need to pay for a small rowboat to um, go out there and snorkel. And we were like, okay, fine. I think it only came out to be like $5 yeah. for the boat or something. Yeah. And which leads into the next island that we went to, which was the Virgin Island, which mm-hmm. is the sandbar. And I unfortunately mm. got to see the sandbar full of vendors. I mm. feel like I didn't even get to see like the beauty of it from what it, um, Man, I've seen. Like what it used photos. to be. Yep, exactly. That stinks. It's like literally they're camped out. Like they have their own stove. They have their oh. own tents. But the cool thing about the Virgin Island is that they have a mangrove. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. can walk out to and you can take a photo of it. It's like super shallow. Did you go see them? Mm-hmm. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. It's like right next. It's like That's super so close cool. to the sandbar. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I love it. nice. That's so cool. Yeah. That's probably like the area where there's no vendors, obviously. Uh, in the mangroves. <laughs> in the mangroves. <laughs> Oh, um, man. But it's rocky, so water shoes is very important. Water shoes. Yeah. Biggest tip for the Philippines, water shoes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's so, oh, you did so much Bohol. Yeah. The only advice I have to offer from Bohol is stay at Bohol Bee Farm or Bohol Coco Farm. Mm. I stayed at Coco Farm. Amazing vegetarian menu. Oh, that's right. It's $9 yeah. a night for a dorm, yeah. a little bit pricier for... Uh, your own private Nipa hut, but it takes about, costs about 300 pesos, which is about 6 US, to get from Tagbilaran Port mm. to Penglao, which is uh, where Alona Beach and the most popular places, like okay. where Trizzy and myself stayed. Uh, that's where most of the accommodation is on Bohol is Peng Lao. Um, but it takes about 300 pesos. I spent a quick, literally 10 hours in Bohol. I didn't yeah. even see really daylight there. Mm-hmm. I, it was just a stopover for me, um, but I can't wait to get back and do everything that you just did. Yes, yeah. you know, explore cool. some other spots. But exactly. um, we yeah. went to Bohol Beef Farm, but we didn't get to eat because the we restaurant got so full. Oh yeah, yeah, we got so full from the river cruise. But we went oh. there to um, try out their ice cream. Ice cream? Yeah. How was it? It was good. It was really good. They're they're um, I think it's cassava cones. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so jealous. Heaven. I spent no time there. Oh uh, well, that's why you gotta go back. I know. I gotta know? go back. Yeah. There. And that Alona Beach is where the um, McDonald's with the milk tea boba is. <laughs> oh, there you go, everyone. Yeah. Hot tip. Hot tip. <laughs> yep. But whole beach club is still a little bit further. I would say we we had to take a tricycle. It was about like ten minutes tricycle mm-hmm. from Alona mm-hmm. Beach. But it was Alona Beach is like popping. Yeah. If you want convenience of food and like going out bars drinking and stuff alone on beach is where you would stay at mm-hmm. and then my last day we went to the ferry and then took the ferry to Cebu and then flew out from Cebu to Taipei so you uh, want to dive into Shargao Shargao yes <laughs> the surfing capital of the Philippines the new Bali okay coconut island um this is one of the hottest spots in the Philippines right now, if not in Southeast Asia, you mm-hmm. guys. It is one of the fastest growing tourism spots in the Philippines. I think the fastest. They're talking about making the port and the airport international, nice. which would, one, create a lot of jobs. Two, I think it would shake up the infrastructure a little bit. So I have mixed feelings about it. And it will also allow a lot of tourism onto this island who we don't know if they can build it fast enough to support all this tourism, right? Yeah. And really, when I was there, there were a ton of tourists, and I felt like they were taking over the island. I'm a tourist. I get it. But when I start seeing way more tourists than locals, it kind of scares me because I don't know what it's doing to the local land, you know? Yeah. You, you don't know that dynamic until you're there for a while. But I will say, Shargao, almost every beach is a surf spot, no matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or an expert. It is the best place, hands down, in the Philippines to go learn to surf. A popular way of getting around this uh, coconut tree-filled island is, of course, by motorbike. And there's so many nooks and crannies 
that you can explore around the island. So it's easy to like meet a bunch of people and get a bike and have your little like motorbike gang and ride around the island to all, you know, you can take your time that way, exploring wherever you want. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's beautiful. I spent a really, really fast two and a half days there. One of those days was with my family and Mm -hmm. we're pretty chill. We sit around and have a few beers and go to bed early. Shark Gal is interesting because every day I was there, it rains from pretty much 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I'm talking (laughs) like torrential downpour like monsoon status. And I played a game with myself when I was there. Every time it started raining, I would go into the nearest bar and have a drink. Nice. I think I had like four drinks in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and have a little San Miguel with nice. calamansi in it. Ooh. Calamansi is like a little orange lime in the Philippines. It's, it's the so best good. flavor. Yeah, yes, the best. Uh, similar to like a Corona in lime. Yeah. General Luna is one of the main cities in Chargao where a lot of the resorts are, where a lot of the tourism is. And it's really built up, similar to Bali in the sense that there's, it's a place for people who do yoga, people who surf, Ooh. people who want to live a healthier lifestyle. Um, there's a lot of healthy food shops there, but there's also a lot of places to party. There's places to go get tattoos. There's gyms to work out in. There's CrossFit gyms, different types of gyms. Um, you know, a lot of resorts, a lot of bed and breakfast, a lot of hostels is as well there um it's a very popular place to stay general luna in cloud nine now cloud nine is the big um expert surf spot in in shargao and it's in like the north uh kind of like the east of the island but it's it's really cool because you can also walk out onto the pier i was there during really really low tide you can walk out to the pier it's 50 pesos to walk out onto the pier which is good because then it controls the flow of people because there's a price gate on it but you can go and watch the surfers from out there and they host a lot of huge uh international surfing competitions as well but there's a lot of places to stay um the main drag there's tons of bars and and places to shop and eat on it's called tourism road but it's Mm -hmm. literally the main road that goes through these towns the port in shargao is called dapa so that's where you can come from um Surigao del Norte, which is the most northern part of Mindanao. And that's where I came from. I came with my family via port Mm -hmm. to the island. The way I left the island, I flew off the island. So there's several ways to get there. It's just, you know, a little bit further than all the other islands in the Visayas that are like grouped together. While I was there, I did a three island tour with my Shargao guide and I booked that through Fat Lips Surf Shop. My Shargao guide tours depart from Bravo Surf Resort. So we all meet there and the three island tours, that was 1500 pesos. That came with lunch, unlimited alcohol, entry into all the islands, plus your tour guides. We visited Guyam, Naked Island and Daku Island. And it was an all-day tour from about 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., so it was a lot of fun. Cool. Met a couple new friends on that. We went out later that night, yeah. so it was really cool. But other tours that my Shargo Guide offers is Sugba Lagoon, which is stunning. Uh, they don't run that tour every single day, though, which is why I didn't get to go oh, on it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Mag Pupunko Rock Pools were actually closed when I was there. They closed for a month between January and February every year to kind of let the natural ecosystem restore, okay. which I totally support. So that just means I got to come back next year during a different month. Hey. I think they were some of the best guides, hands down. The cool. boats were super fun. The crowd is a nice mixed crowd. Nice. And the food is delicious. And you get, I mean, who could ask for unlimited, what more could you ask for than unlimited red horse and rum? A secret gem there. There's a little pan de coco stand near General Luna, near the church. Uh, There's also a basketball court right next to this pan de coco stand. And they sell this amazing homemade bread filled with like coconut chunks. And it's five pesos a roll. It is amazing but it's only open from 2 to 4 p.m every day you guys gotta get there yeah as far as accommodation there like i said i stay in hostels i usually stay in a shared dorm and i stayed at lampara which is near cloud nines right next to white banana beach club which is a lot of fun they have acoustic nights amazing massive menu lampara was absolutely gorgeous they had some concrete dorms as well bit on the pricier side it was like 22 dollars a night for a bunk in an eight bedroom or an eight bunk dorm 
but it was like oh, wow. AC. Yeah, it was really okay. clean and it was like a, it felt safe and mm-hmm. kind of secluded. Gotcha. So it was fine. And like I was spending half that every other night I was in the Philippines. So yeah. I didn't mind paying for that. I was only there two nights as well. Mm-hmm. Mad Monkey was closed at that time. It's a very popular place to stay there, but it was closed at the time due, due to uh, some, env- some environmental issues that they were facing. So they had to close temporarily. But another recommendation would be Paglaom Hostel, which is a very, very social hostel if you want to go out and meet others. Um, they only have X amount, like a very small amount of beds per night. So you, for that one, you got to book early. Um, Shargao, I think it's definitely an island you could easily spend a week or two on. So I can't wait to get back there. And I think you guys need to go there on your next <laughs> yeah. trip just to discover it for oh, yourself. for sure. Yeah. So Barakai, I went to Barakai. This was in my January. Mm-hmm trip um spent two nights there it's a beautiful beach and it's it's brand new when i went well yeah. i say brand new but it was like post oh, yeah. closure we stayed at coast which i felt like royalty there like that is a great hotel to stay at Ooh. yes i don't know if we were assigned a butler or anything <laughs> but there was this guy I wish I knew his name, but we'll just call him Kuya for now. <laughs> Kuya was there at every corner when we needed him. I remember uh, when we were trying to settle in to figure out where to watch the sunset. Uh-huh. There was like a perfect spot right outside their um, entrance. And we were looking around. We saw like people with blankets and pillows. And uh-huh. we're like, oh, where did they get that? So I, was, I turned around to walk to the uh, front desk, probably halfway in my turn. He was just like, you need, t- you need blanket, you need towel, you need pillow. Set it up so and nice. everything. Yeah, like quick. The room was clean. It was such a cute um, hotel. Mm. Their breakfast was probably the best breakfast. Like, what? Yes. They had ube champarado. Oh. They had matcha butter. So for breakfast? For breakfast. <laughs> and it was like. Matcha butter? Matcha butter. Oh, that was probably really loud for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it was Much so good. Like, their, um, their hot breakfast. They have hot breakfast. They have cold breakfast. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I always did, like the hot breakfast. Like, yeah. they have the regular American bacon. Mm-hmm. Um, Longanisa. Yeah, they yeah. have, oh, my gosh, Tocino. Man, I can't talk about this. Ooh, it's so good. Yum. Yeah. And for it to be included in the price. Yeah, was, like, that's really good. Amazing. Um, Coast was a little bit more on the pricier side, but it's all worth it. Uh, just because the location was perfect. It took us maybe like five, 10 minutes walk to go to the area, the market area, Mm -hmm. which is called D mall, like the letter D D (laughs) mall. And that area had all like the the shopping and the food that you wanted. Mm -hmm. They also have a chicken in the cell there. For Coast Barakai Hotel, it was, uh, taxes included everything with breakfast was, um, $187 per night. So we stayed there two nights. Okay. Um, it was so cute there. It's cute. Aww. And they gave us these bamboo straws. So you kind of know that they are like environmentally friendly. And yeah. Stuff like that. They have an ice cream machine. Like, oh my like gosh. free I- unlimited free ice, ice cream? cream? Oh, yes. hell yeah. I would have gotten $187 of worth of ice cream when I, I was going there. back, girl. No, they had a pandan, pandan. flavor Yum. ice cream. And that was really good. Yeah. Pandan is like a vanilla, like similar to, it's like an Asian vanilla flavor. That's really good. It's really good, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Baraka was cool. We, it was, it was like the relaxing time for mm, us. Yeah. And one day we took a sailboat out into the waters. It was so dope. Ooh, was it on your it's own? Like, you sailed on your own? No. <laughs> Heavens, no, I can't Heavens, do that. no. <laughs> no, their sailboat was interesting. They had like, uh, uh, so here's like the, the main part of the boat or something. Mm-hmm. And they have wings, <laughs> like made out oh. of nets or something. Yeah, on the outrigger, like, right? Yeah, and you just like chill there. That's what yeah, like a hammock. I've never seen that. Oh, you have. Oh, on the big dream boatman boats, they were all. It was like that. Yeah, oh, man, they so were nice. the the banka boats, but in between the wood. Yeah. Wood panels. Oh, cool. They would have. They would the just hammock. lie a double net out so the hammock. So you would literally be speeding along in the boat. Man. And you'd be lying there and be That's like, this so is nice. heaven. That's the yeah, now you understand right why I went on a second tour. Because I was just like, <laughs> literally just, oh, the whole time. I'm going to yeah. let my skin glisten on yeah. the <laughs> Yeah, it was really dope. And I saw a purple jellyfish there. That sounds terrifying. Yes. It's I don't know if it was alive or what, but it was outside of the water early in the morning. 
it was just chilling. At first, I thought it was like somebody's clothes or something, <gasps> but I got closer oh, to how it. Dark and I was like, was "Well, it's kind of translucent." Oh, yeah. Did you it was take a cool. photo? I did take a photo. Okay, video good. Because <laughs> I thought it was super fascinating. Mm, what like, happens oh. when you touch it? Not so know. cool anymore, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and from Barakai, we took a speedboat back to Kataklan. Mm-hmm. And then took the taxi to Aklan, where the festival happened. The Ati Atihan festival. <laughs> it's all dancing, all drinking. <laughs> and painting in the street. They just like parade, showing off their glamorous mm-hmm. costumes and stuff. And um, yeah, I didn't uh, get to make it to that, but... The main part was like the dancing, the drinking, the live music that you're like, you're sur- you're basically surrounded by people playing instruments. Mm-hmm. could be the xylophone, it could be the saxophone, trumpet, drums, like it was wow. lit. Yeah. And it goes on for like hours. I was really tired, but everybody that I was hanging around with, I was like, you guys are still going. Oh my yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Most of these festivals celebrate Santo Nino, which is basically the baby Jesus. And um, he is the symbol for most of these festivals. Every city has their own name for the festivals. It's the same thing as Sinolog in Cebu, which is like one of the biggest in the country. Mm -hmm. But I think they also they're also celebrating like the the start of Catholicism in the country with the little baby Santo Nino. You guys have to experience one of those festivals for sure. Every every city pretty much has their own version, so Mm -hmm. you can like go to any mid small mid sized city and and. Pick one to go to. Mm. One of the coolest things in the Philippines that I got to do was my meeting my stepmom's family. And my stepmom's been in my life for 30 years. I've never met her family. She's the only one from her family um, in Surigao del Sur, which is in Mindanao. She's the only one that came to the U.S. It was amazing. I swear I met like 70 of them. Oh, I'm not awesome. in the, not even all of them were there. It's because we went to a wedding in Bacolod. Awesome. And a lot of my cousins, I call them my cousins, you know, they were all, you know, all different ages, but they would call me like a foreigner and they were <laughs> like, you're so pretty. And I'm like, I look just like the rest of you guys. That means you're pretty <laughs> also. And they were so sweet, so yeah. welcoming. Yeah. And had so many questions for me, like, oh, that's great. do you have a boyfriend, and where is your husband, and <laughs> how old are you, and why don't you have kids yet? And I'm like, well, guys, in America. Yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> it's a little different, but, man, if I had a penny for every time... You got those questions? I got those yeah, questions. Yeah, I could buy the entire country of the Philippines <laughs> right now, and good thing it didn't make me self-conscious, but it was... It's a bit exhausting to answer yeah. why, why, why. That was just one of the most humbling experiences, too, was being able to stay in their homes as yeah. well. And the fact that Filipinos will literally give you the clothes off their back, awesome. literally change beds for you. Like, mm-hmm. where they're like, I'll go sleep on a mat in the living room yeah. so you can have my bed and mattress for yeah. the night. So the hospitality is is uh, overwhelming, but it's in, a, in the best way possible. It's, yeah. You know, it humbles you, makes you really think about what you have back home and the resources that we're using or we're wasting even. Yeah. So well, that's I, cool that you really got to experience like the touristy side, but also like the local side. A hundred percent. Like crate. Yeah. You guys, I took maybe three hot showers in the Philippines <laughs> because even in um, the hostels I stayed in, a lot of them didn't have hot showers. Okay. Cause that's an, that's an expense, right? Yeah. I took probably three hot showers in a month. Like everything else wow. was just a cold shower um, I've bucket washed and bucket flushed more in my life <laughs> than anywhere, any other country I visited. And it was a really humbling experience. It's like literally taking a hot water handle for granted back home yeah. or in a Western country or the fact that you can flush a toilet or the fact that you even toss the toilet paper in the toilet. Like yeah. we take all of these things for granted. Right. It's just crazy. It's it's yeah. very, very different the way they live and it makes you think about maybe what you could change, what you could live without back home yeah. even. Yeah. It's a bit more raw, you know, it's True. grittier and mm-hmm. it's fun to just kind of, you know, take it down a notch yeah. from, it's our, from our bougie lives every once in a while. To them aren't they like Yeah, that? exactly. There's so many little customs and little traditions that I felt like I got to experience when I was there. And one of the big ones, and I think in a lot of 
Southeast Asian countries is, you know, modesty. Yeah. Covering up when you go out in public. In Sikihor, the last island I went to my last week, that was the only resort where there were signs everywhere saying, put clothes on when you go out in public. Don't oh, wear wow. Don't wear just your swimsuit out. Yeah. Huh. That was the only one that said that. Even just putting a sarong on, like tying it up here, yeah, is good enough. But like, don't go out showing your stomach and wearing like no pants. Right, right. <laughs> That's why right. sarong is so hey. handy to bring. That's yeah. Right. And then we chatted about this earlier, but like a friendly sign of respect, like if you're mm-hmm. in a bar or you're trying to get a server's attention, yeah. or you're in a in a hostel hotel, like you want to call people kuya, mm-hmm. which means older brother. Yeah. And Filipino or ate, which means like older sister. It's like a sign of respect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why when Trizzy was talking about the kuya was at coast. Yeah. Always ready to serve them. Yeah. So it was really nice. Um, one cool thing that I think half the Filipinos I know have only heard of this, but I saw this several times when I was hanging out with different groups of locals. They would share one cup, a small cup, like smaller than this, with like a liter of beer. So of San Meg or Red Horse. Mm -hmm. Um, they'd share one cup between five or six of them for two reasons. First one is, um, you have to pay attention to when the cup is in front of you to pour your portion of the drink and drink from it. Mm -hmm. And it ensures, if you have to pay attention, that ensures that you're not on your phone, like ignoring the conversation that you're actually present. And two, it shows that you're trusting everyone with you to not poison the cup. So... Interesting. Yeah. So you guys are drinking from the same cup? Um, They didn't include me because I think they would think that they're like, oh, she's a foreigner. She might think this is weird. Even though I look like everyone in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. But they never included me. They would let oh. me have my own cup. But amongst them, it was like a silent thing that they did. Wow. They're like, we share one cup. Yeah, right. We celebrated my one of my auntie's 75th birthday in Barobo. Oh, okay. And... Um, she, we rented a karaoke thing all oh, night at her house and everyone's nice. drinking like San Mig and yeah, eating yeah. the lechon, which is a roasted pig, a whole roasted pig. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a very big tradition in the Philippines to roast a whole pig and yeah. stick, an, stick an apple in the mouth right. and, and serve it at big parties. But karaoke was everywhere. I remember I went with my cousins in Bacolod the day after the wedding and it was like, Oh my gosh, like 150 pesos an hour, which is like $3. One of the nights of the festival, they had like karaoke. Oh, that's so awesome. And so, of course, I sang Destiny's Child. Of course. Oh, know. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Gotta show them what my vocals could do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you and me both, because I am always singing Mariah, oh, girl. Whitney, Celine. Oh, you reach, huh? You reach. Yeah, but man, if you actually heard me, you know my dad, <laughs> one night, I mean, he did have a lot of beer, okay. but he's like, Leah. He leans over. He's like, Leah, does your mom know you're this bad at karaoke? <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, guess what? My mom loves me anyway. <laughs> but yeah, karaoke is a big thing in the Philippines. And they're all like really good at it. I don't know. It's because I was raised in another country that I'm so bad at singing. <laughs> We're going to get into packing. Last but not is, least. Yeah, last but not least. This is the stuff y'all really need to know about. Yeah. And here we're just going to tell you. From our experiences mm-hmm. combined, what you absolutely should have yes. in the Philippines for various reasons. One may be you may not be able to find it in the Philippines. Two, the quality is better if you're getting it from abroad. Yeah. Three, the extortion rate or the price of how much it costs in the Philippines is astronomical compared to if you just brought it from home. Yeah. And I get it, a lot of you, maybe budget travelers who are traveling with like a 30 or 45 liter backpack may not be able to fit it. But the quality is probably better if you're bringing it from home and the price may be cheaper. So from our experiences, these are a few of the items we definitely think you should bring to the Philippines. Yeah. Number one thing, actually one and two, I think these go hand in hand. Water shoes and a dry bag. Yes, yes. The multi-day boat excursions you go on, things like Big Big Dream Boatman and Tao Philippines, most of them won't let you go on the tour unless you have a dry bag. Oh, wow. Yeah, they say you have to get it. That is a good tip. Yeah, and they say um, it's great because you're literally, when you're on boats, water is getting everywhere. The boats are rocking. So if your your bag is on deck and the boats are rocking, the water may not only splash up, it may just be coated at the bottom of the boat. So dry bag, worth all your money. I used it probably every single day. And water shoes, Mm -hmm. I bought mine off of Amazon as well. They were 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um... They had a decent 
uh, bottom sole. I actually did all of Kawasan Falls, all the bouldering, mm-hmm. um, in my water shoes. That I used them so much and so well that the tops started tearing a bit at the end of my trip. Gotcha. But they were totally worth it to me. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of broken coral, a lot of rocky beaches. So when you're getting up out of the water mm. onto the beach, oh, you yeah. want to have these water shoes on. Sometimes the flip-flops, they'll fall off, yeah, right? Yeah, and they're hard to like just push through yeah, when you're exactly. in the water. Well, almost on water shoes, you feel like you can go running in the water. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah, <laughs> I got my water shoes in Amazon for like $12 or something. Yeah. And they look like... The Pumas. <laughs> yeah. So I actually made a conscious decision this trip to use reef safe sunscreen. I love that. Yeah. Um, because there's so much tourism in the Philippines and only growing and I want to care as much as I, I want to do my part to care about the coral reefs. So I ordered some Australian gold and some ocean potion just off of Amazon just to see what would work better. Better. Um, they have reef safe uh, ingredients in them. And, you know, they last your standard 80 minutes in the water. Mm-hmm. Um, they're pretty big bottles. I brought it everywhere with me. They smelled amazing and they worked so well. So highly recommend these. Sunglasses. You, you guys should already know that. Yeah. Hat. Protect yourselves. Y'all, that goes without saying. Like, don't rely just on sunscreen. Exactly. Yeah. Most actually, you know how people in the Philippines, you know how they cover up? They wear clothes. Yeah. They don't even use sun- sunscreen. It's a foreigner thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing to bring is GoPro. Especially if you're going to go to the tropical place. Like, you need, like, a waterproof camera. Mm -hmm. Um, I always have mine with me. Mm -hmm. I love snorkeling. I love going into the water. Um, However, we did learn recently about the the casing Mm -hmm. of a GoPro. Um, It's different. Fresh water, salt water could be different. Your GoPro will react differently in fresh versus salt water. But they say the GoPro itself, the waterproof Mm -hmm. ones that don't need a casing are only waterproof up to 30 feet. So if you are diving deeper than that, you want to get the GoPro casing Mm -hmm. for it. And you can actually buy the official GoPro casing off of Amazon as well. Um, And that can come in, you know, a day or two. And I, I brought mine with me to the Philippines. I never ended up using it because I didn't go deeper than that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you're going to go deeper than 30 feet, you got to get the casing for the GoPro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then going into secondary cameras, um, I, the GoPro was new for me on this Philippines trip. My main device for recording and taking photos is my cell phone. Nice. (laughs) It's an iPhone 8 plus, (laughs) but I swear by it, a waterproof phone bag. Yes. And I can't even tell you how many people in the Philippines were like, oh my gosh, did you get that here? That's so smart. I'm like, no, I actually got it at home off mm-hmm. of Amazon. It's about 7 to $8. Yeah. But I had tour guides going deep to film yep. clownfish and turtles, going down like 10, 15 feet, and the phone was great. Easy. Granted, this is a waterproof iPhone mm-hmm. in a waterproof foam bag, but I was always scared to go deep with it. Yeah, yeah, oh, actually, if you buy an Earth Pack dry bag, it comes with a oh, waterproof cool. phone case. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Cool. So I, I think I have like four <laughs> because sometimes I'm like, oh, it broke. So I'll buy another oh, one. Okay. <laughs> All right. One of the biggest things, even in the Thailand episode. Yes. Sarong for everything. Yes. Cover up, towel, uh, pillow, yep. sunshade. Uh, there's so many multi-uses for it. You know, cover your mouth when you're coughing, use it as a scarf, use it on the bus if yeah. you get cold. And I brought two different ones, you know, just depending on what outfit I was wearing that day, you know, match the color. Also, portable chargers are very important. Yes. Because if you're like Leah, always using her phone for photos and yeah. videos, mm-hmm. you definitely need to recharge it as mm-hmm. well. And bring, remember to bring the correct cord with you. Yes. Yes. Because correct you don't want to be bringing just your GoPro cord mm-hmm. or getting it confused and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like that has happened to me. And I was like, no, why did I do that? Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I've done that before too. Mm-hmm. But also I have a problem with keeping my portable chargers charged. Oh. <laughs> so keep your portable is... chargers charged, yes. everyone. Oh, of course. If you're in North America, it's the same type of plug, which is easy. If you're coming from a different country, um, it'll be a different cord. So you got to have your adapter converter. Yeah. But luckily for us, we didn't have to do any of that, which I love going to countries where I don't have yeah. to use an adapter I converter. Know. Bug bracelets. My thing. I always have it with mm-hmm. me. Sometimes even when I'm hiking in LA. I'll yeah. Yeah. Can never be too safe. Exactly. So anything bug repellent. Remember, remember, yes. remember. Yes, you guys. It's expensive in the Philippines. Oh, is it? I yeah. bought some extra off because mm-hmm. I thought I would need it. Yeah. And for two tiny bottles, it was two tiny, tiny bottles. 
it was like nine dollars, which those bottles back home would have cost probably less than five together. Oh wow! Just a couple of ounces. Okay. Yeah, but Good to know. you guys, mosquitoes carry diseases. Unfortunately, yes, I know they carry diseases and they can infect humans when they bite you with malaria or mm-hmm. dengue or Zika. Yep. Uh, that's not all of that is prominent in the Philippines. You just can never you just be never too know. careful. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I also like to bring is a peppermint roller just because planes to me, they always stink. Like you can smell yeah. like get the gas. What is a peppermint roller? It's basically just like a, a roller like with um, oil, peppermint oil what? roller. Yeah. So wait, like a perfume roller ball thing. It's really small. I can show it to you. Okay. I get it from Sage. S A J E. Oh. I'll post it up here as well. Okay. Like, it's it's pretty. It's it's nice. It's dope. It's also it helps with um, cold and sicknesses too, mm. like to clear your sinuses. Yeah. It's such a strong smell. But I usually put it here. I put it under my, like my nose right here, so I could smell the peppermint instead of like the gas. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So it also helps me with like motion sickness as well. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wondering. I'm like, what is You're a like, peppermint is roller? That? I was thinking because of it's you. I was yeah. thinking of peppermint foam roll. <laughs> I was like, wow, she's serious about foam rolling. <laughs> and along with the the peppermint roller, I have my drama means, like mm-hmm. the non drowsy one, which is just basically ginger. Yeah. In the tablet, That's like good. a powder ginger. And the drowsy one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Drama means good if you're always, especially on the, in the Philippines, you're on a boat a lot. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> or you're on a crazy road mm-hmm. in a van getting yeah. to some other city. Aloe vera is something that I like to bring because mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more fair skin. Mm-hmm. Um, so I burn before I get dark. Yeah, yeah. So I like to apply that on yeah. me as well. Yeah. yeah. And if you're saving space, though... Um, Keep in mind, we do recommend these products to bring with you, but if you're really, really short on Mm. space, you can get aloe, bug spray, and sunscreen in the Philippines, but the brand, the quality, you guys, not the same. The prices are exorbitant. So if you have the space, why not bring things you can trust and things that you know are a bit less expensive from home? Girl, there was sunscreen I was borrowing from friends in the Philippines. It was literally called... Fun house sunscreen, a hundred plus plus SPF. That's what? not even real. A hundred plus. And the two last biggest things that my dad, you know, who is Filipino, while we were there, he's like, Leah, bring two bottles of hand sanitizer mm. and two rolls of toilet paper. And he said a bar of soap. He said this for a few different reasons. Um, most places and washrooms and comfort rooms, as they call them in the Philippines, most bathrooms, uh, will run out of toilet paper and hand soap very, very quickly. And when you can't soap or wash your hands, you use sanitizer because it kills uh, a lot of germs, yeah. right? So my dad was like, you know, we're going to be staying with a lot of family, a lot of people going to be in and out. Yeah. And they, a lot of them don't have the money or the time to just keep buying supplies. Oh, so right. bring some of your own when you can. And toilet paper, man, I learned that the hard way a couple times, but it's always just good to have extra. Because you could use it for tissue for your nose. You yeah. can use it to wipe things. Um, but toilet paper, you can buy single rolls in the Philippines. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Hand sanitizer, a lot harder to find good hand sanitizer. Um, bar of soap, you could also find in the Philippines, Mm -hmm. but if you have room for, you know, a small two ounce bottle of hand sanitizer or sanitizing wipes, Mm -hmm. you can bring like even a half roll of toilet paper to get you through the first few days. So if there's not toilet paper and you know, a small bar of soap, or as you guys know from previous episodes, I'm a big fan of Dr. Bronner's. (laughs) So I bring a little one ounce bottle, multi-use Castile soap, um, those are our three, you know, essential items on our packing list. Yeah. So we have absolutely loved talking to you guys about the Philippines, and I think I can speak for both of us yes. when we say this was one of our favorite episodes to film. Yeah. Don't forget that we are a visual podcast, so you got to find us on YouTube. Yep. Uh, Ticket to Anywhere podcast is our YouTube channel. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, Ticket Number 2 Anywhere podcast, and Twitter at t2a podcast and don't hesitate to reach out to us to ask questions if we haven't answered it because i know it's a lot that we've given you but there's more that we wish we could give you um we're very active on our instagram facebook and twitter so message us let us know your questions we're happy to help make you feel more comfortable about booking your trip to the philippines yeah we know you're gonna get there soon and if you're listening to us on anchor you can actually leave us a voicemail and if you're listening to us anywhere else don't forget Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and Stitcher. And I guess we'll be uh, talking to you soon. Yeah, mabuhay. Peace.